We are continuing the story of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva. He was known by many names, and one of his names was Barha Babaji Mahashaya, which one is more often mentioned in, in the book. So last time we were reading about the story when he went to Kolkata. And that time in Kolkata was a big plague disease that uh, actually was taking lives of many people. But when he came to Kolkata, he started actually Sankirtan there, and many people started to join, and very quickly the plague disappeared from Kolkata. So how actually his bhakti was strong and he could uh, inspire so many people to do Harinam, Sankirtan. So he, after he was finished in Kolkata, uh, we are continuing the story that Barha Babaji Mahashaya now decided to go back to Puri with his party of 18 persons by steamer or boat, steamer boat, because there was no railway line direct from Kolkata to Puri during those days. So they had to go by boat. The journey began. The steamer started steaming and Babaji Mahashaya started Sankirtana. The Muslim captain, captain of the steamer shouted, What is that noise? No noise, replied Baba Mahashaya, but the chanting of the holy name. It will not do you any harm. On the other hand, it will ward off evil and beget good or bring good for everyone. Stop it shouted the captain again. So Baba Mahashaya stopped the Sankirtana. Not very long after, a strong wind began to blow. The sea became turbulent and the waves began to splash the steamer and splatter. The passengers were alarmed, and so was the captain. The captain saw that when the waves rose high and threatened to engulf the steamer, Babaji Mahashaya shouted, Jainitai, and immediately the waves subsided and the sea became calm. This happened a number of times. The captain then came, running to Babaji Mahashaya, and said apologetically, Baba, I'm sorry I stopped your chanting. It is on account of that offense that providence has sent this storm to punish me. Kindly start your kirtana again. All other passengers who had been watching the rise and fall of the waves at Baba's bidding, as it were, with surprise, also made the same request. Sankirtana 
again started and the sea gradually became still or peaceful. But no sooner had the steamer reached Kalapani than it was lashed by a much more severe storm. So they entered into more stronger storm. It began to be tossed, tossed up and down mercilessly by frenzied waves. It was thrown by waves. The passengers were all but drowned. It appeared that the steamer was soon going to capsize. The captain and the passengers, in their helplessness, looked aghast at, afraid at Babaji Mahashaya as the only hope of, the, of their survival. But Baba sat calm and composed and confident that Harinama would take care of them all. He only asked them to chant more vigorously. Bajanitai Goranga Radeshyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. Everyone, including the captain, joined him in the Kirtana. This continued for four hours. It seemed that a royal battle was being fought between Harinama and nature. At the end, Mother Nature had to surrender at the feet of Harinama. The storm was over and the sky became clear. The passengers breathed a sigh of relief. The captain came and humbly bowing at the feet of Babaji Mahashaya said, It is only by your mercy that our lives have been saved. Otherwise, in a furious storm like this, there was no chance at all of our survival. Okay. <laughs> Baba said, not my mercy, Captain Sahib, the mercy of the name. The power of the name is infinite. There is no difference between the name and the Lord. The Lord has infinite forms and infinite names. Muhammad, Buddha, Allah, Shiva, Vishnu, Krishna, Nittai, and Gora are all his names. There is substantially no difference between them. The difference is only in manifestation of Shakti and Bhava. So the only difference is in manifestation of Shakti and Bhava. The steamer reached Chandbali, from where the party took a boat for Katak. Yeah. When the boat reached Katak, a number of people were already waiting at the sea coast to receive, receive Barha Babaji Mahashaya. They requested him to stay in Katak for some time. But he could not stay there for more than a few days on account of the Ratayatra festival. 
His short stay in Katak, however, marked the beginning of the end of widespread prejudice amongst the people against Vaishnavas. The people of Katak, especially the in, uh, intelligentsia, meaning uh, like uh, intellectuals, were under the influence of Brahma Samaj. As we were talking before, uh, this Brahma Samaj was uh, a new movement and they looked like not nicely towards Vaishnavism. So we're under the influence of Brahma Samaj. And for the first time, perhaps, they got an opportunity to see genuine Vaishnavas, before whom they could not but bow down in respect. Such respect was gradually converted into love, which later turned into worship, as testified by the Rasa Bihari Mat in Katak, where a life size image of Barha Babaji Mahashaya is even today worshipped independently alongside the deities of Lord Gauranga, Radha, and Krishna. After enrapturing and entrancing the people of Katak, Baba Mahashaya started for Puri. The postmaster of Katak had already informed Gopal Babu, the head clerk of the Puri post office, about the arrival of Baba Mahashaya there. The news had spread all over and the people of Puri were in ecstasy on the prospect of finding their own Babaji Mahashaya in their midst. So when the train reached Puri at night, a host of devotees and admirers of Babaji were present at the station to receive him with garlands. Babaji gave each of them a loving um, embrace and then proceeded to the temple of Jagannath, singing and dancing. After performing Sankirtana at the temple, Baba went out and sat on the Snan Mandapa, surrounded by many people. Many people had brought prashad, which Balaram Babu collected and served to everyone. After prashad, Baba Mahashaya and his party retired to the vacant house of Arish Chandra Basu, in which Balaram had made arrangements for their stay. The next day, at night, Babaji Mahashaya and his party were invited for Kirtana at the house of Harivalaba, an advocate. At sunset, they reached his house singing Baja Nitai Gaur Radeshyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. Many lawyers and other important persons, including some sannyasis from 
Ramakrishna mission had assembled at the house. They were all eager to listen to the Kirtana of Baba Mahasaya. Many of them had some questions to ask, which they thought they would ask him after the Kirtana was over. Some wanted to know, <coughs> some wanted to know whether he believed in Vedanta or not. And with that end in view, they had prepared a number of questions. Parivala Bababu wanted to examine whether he had any grudge or ill will against any particular sect or person or not. Baba Mahashaya performed dance and kirtana for half an hour and sat down. He took only a few seconds to read the questions in the minds of the people and then started kirtana again. We have said before that he rarely sang songs previously prepared by himself or by others. He had the supernatural gift of singing extempore, I mean, so, I mean, singing songs according to the requirements of the situation in which he was placed by providence. So this time, the kirtana had to be of a very special kind. It was not rasa kirtana or lila kirtana, but it was philosophical in content. At first, the kirtana related to questions regarding Vedanta. Like, what is the relationship between jnana or knowledge and bhakti? What are the different kinds of jnana? How does a real jnani behave? Baba himself raised these questions in his kirtana one by one and answered them. At first, people thought that verses of this kind already existed, and he was only repeating them in his kirtana. Soon, it became clear that there were no such verses, and that he had the rare gift of composing them as he sang. The Vedantists, who were sitting at some distance, now came nearer, near and began to listen to the Kirtana with greater attention. There was no end to their surprise. The very questions they had thought of asking, and which they regarded as most difficult, were being answered systematically and convincingly through Kirtana. Others also got satisfactory answers to the questions they had wanted to ask. The Kirtana went on to expound the great sayings of Sri Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, like 
Advesta sarva bhutanam samam sarveshu bhuteshu sarva dharmam paritya jamam ekam sharanam vraja. So different verses which also Gurudev was mentioning a little bit before this sarva dharmam paritya ja mamekam sharanam raja. So different verses from Bhagavad Gita he was also singing through Kirtana symbolizing the synthesis of all religions. So he was, this is nice, that he was actually sing, you, singing the verses and uh, Kirtana in a way to connect all religions. That removed all doubts of Hari Babu and his friends regarding the large mindedness and catholicity of babaji mahasaya thus kirtana went on went on till 11:30 pm at the end all began to sing together Vajanitai Goranga Radesham Japahare Krishna Hariram. This time, the sannyasis, the lawyers, and all others also joined the kirtana. They danced and sang, clapping their hands as they danced. Everyone was thrilled and transported. I don't understand the meaning of transported in this context. Uh, no one wanted that the kirtana should stop. But Baba Mahashaya stopped it at 12 o'clock so that no inconvenience was caused to them. They came near and offered obeisances to him and began to express their gratitude and surprise at his removing the doubts and satisfactorily answering their questions without their asking them. Baba Mahashaya replied, with characteristic humility. Brethren, brothers, you should express your gratitude to Nitai Chand, not me. He is omniscient and he knew your questions and answered them. I am only a tool in his hands. One day, a gentleman named Yari Babu invited Baba Mahashaya at his party for Prashad. After they had taken Prashad, he said to Baba Mahashaya pray prayerfully, Would you kindly tell me what a fallen soul like me should do so that he can make steady progress in the path of God realization. Babaji said, For we, imbecile, sinful, and maya bound jivas like us, the only remedy is Nama Sankirtana. Yari as, uh, then continues, but there are many names of the Lord, like Ram, Krishna, Dwara Kanta, Gopal, Girida, Raman, Gopivalaba, and so on. 
which of these names should one take? Babaji said, there are so many names because the Lord is infinite. He has infinite forms. Each form has a name, which is identical with the form. The name is the Lord himself in that form. There have to be infinite forms because there are devotees of different kinds and their likings and dispositions are different. One has to choose a particular form according to his liking and fix his mind firmly on it. This is so beautiful how actually Radha and Krishna are so merciful that they have form which is for each individual, perfect form for them. Actually, there it's called Ishtadev, their own Radha and Krishna. So this is so beautiful. This is, I, I, for me, this is the highest mercy that they are so much merciful that they will expand. They will be in form for each person as their own Ishtadev. So beautiful. So Piari continues. How can one set one's mind firmly on the form of God one likes? Mind, by its very nature, is unfixed. It moves always from one object to another. Babaji says, the only way, the only way of fixing the mind is through prema or love. If you love your Lord with all your heart and soul, your mind will automatically turn from the other things and remain always fixed on the Lord. Yari asked, how do you get prema? And Babaji says, prema is eternally realized. Nitya Siddha. It cannot be attained by any sadhana or spiritual discipline. It is a jewel that shines by its own light. Neither Shravana nor kirtana, nor other means can generate prema. All spiritual disciplines aim mainly at the purity of the heart. When the heart is purified, prema, which is already there, becomes manifest. Wow, so beautiful. So this is our natural position that Prema is always present. Just we are working on purity of our heart. This is so beautiful. Yari then continues, but Maharaj, I would like to know one thing. If someone is so fallen and weak that he, he can neither practice Raganuga Bhakti nor Vaidhi Bhakti, is there no way by which he can attain the lotus feet of the Lord? And Babaji says, why not? Take the example of a, <clears throat> a similar situation in the mundane sphere, worldly sphere. 
Suppose you are the owner of a big estate, which has to be managed, uh, managed well. And there are a number of cases concerning the estate in the court. But you are illiterate or mentally and physically so weak that you cannot do anything then what will you do? Piari says, it is easy. I shall give attorney attorneyship to a capable person who will do everything for me. And Babaji says, the same is true of the spiritual world. If you are not capable of doing anything, you should give attorneyship to someone who is capable of doing everything for you. You should surrender yourself completely and sincerely and depend wholly upon him. It would be his responsibility to see that you realize Krishna. Piyari asked, does it mean that in that case, one need not do any sadhana? And Babaji says, in that case, one should try as far as possible to practice the sadhana prescribed by the Guru. But if he cannot practice it, he should not do anything that is against the precepts of the Guru or the injunctions of the Shastras. Guru is like the boatman who promises to carry you across the ocean. He rows and asks you to row so that you can reach the destination more quickly. But if you cannot row, as he wants. You must not row haphazardly in different directions. You could remain sitting quietly with faith and confidence that he will take you across sooner or, or later. Yari Babu then fell at the feet of Babaji Mahashaya with tears in his eyes and said with a voice choked with emotion, Baba, I am a fallen creature who is drowning in the ocean of Maya and is fighting helplessly with the waves. I do need a boatman to take me across. I do not know how and where to find one. I therefore surrender myself completely at your feet. Kindly accept me as your servant forever and ever and never leave me. Baba Mahashaya said, Do not worry, you are mine. Nice. Yeah, I got that. So, we are continuing. Now, Barha Babaji actually was a skilled builder of human personality. Like a skilled sculptor, he shaped and molded everyone who he met, whether atheist or theist, sinner or saint, jnani 
or yogi into the mold of shuddha, pure bhakti. His strategy was simple. He first established a rapport, rapport with the new man by giving him a loving embrace. Then he peeped into his heart. If he found there any angularity or something that would not let him fit into the mold of pure bhakti, unmixed with jnana, karma, or yoga, he tried to round it. Uh, he tried to round it off by appropriate means. A typical example of this is the metamorphosis of Baba Basant Kumar Das, a Hatha yogi who was proud of his attainments in yoga and looked contemptuously upon bhakti. An interesting account of how in a, in a trice he was cast into the mold of bhakti by Babaji Mahasaya is given in Charita Shuddha. Charita Shuddha, uh, original biography of Sri Radha Raman Charan Das Deva. So, somebody wants to read more in detail, so have this original biography. It's called Charita Shuddha. Charita Shuddha. In his own words, which are as follows. I went to Jagannath Puri at the time of Ratha Yatra in the year 1897. I saw that I saw that a group of people who looked neither like sadhus nor sannyasis nor grihastas householders were dancing and singing aloud. Bhaja Nitai Goranga Radhe Shyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. So they were singing. All of them wore a tulsi kanti or necklace around their neck and tilaka on their foreheads. On their body, they wore a chadar, chadar, a sheet of cloth in such a manner that it covered them up to the feet. In their midst, there was a tall person who particularly attracted my notice. I con concluded from the Aprakrita, transcendental bhava, that seemed to radiate from his face that he was a Mahapurusha. His darshana aroused an inexplicable feeling in my heart, and I kept on looking at him like one who was under a spell. After some time, the group came dancing and singing near me. I bow down to them with reverence. As I did so, the Mahapurusha also bowed down to me and gave me, gave me a loving embrace. Oh, the magic of that divine touch, the soothing effect it had, the thrill it sent in my body. I felt 
as if I was completely sold out to him. I kept standing like one who was at a fix and did not know what to do. The Mahapurusha took me along with him to the temple of Jagannath. There they performed Sankirtana for some time and then they proceeded to Kotabhog Mat, where they were invited for Mahaprasad. They took me along with them. We were made to sit in a room of the mat. Soon after it began to rain torrentially, very strongly. The courtyard of the mat was filled with water, which was knee deep until the knees. Mm -hmm. A little later, we were called for Mahaprasad, which was to be served in a room on the other side of the courtyard. Mahapurusha exclaimed like a child, I will not wait through water. I will not go through water. Someone should take me there in his lap. Such was the magic of his words that in spite of his massive figure, I had to say, Come. I will take you there in my lap. Immediately, he sprang like a child into my lap. I felt that he was light, like a doll made of pork. And I had no difficulty at all in carrying him. But I had just crossed the courtyard when he became so heavy that it was impossible for me to carry him even a step further. I had to make him get down in the veranda or the balcony instead of taking him inside the room. The Mahapurusha made me sit by his side in the dining room. The Mahaprasad was served and we were asked to start eating after Haridwani. Mahapurusha then took three or four peppers and a small quantity of each of the other things from his plate and mixed them all into a lump. He put a portion of it into my mouth with his own hand. It was so pungent, so spicy, that as soon as I swallowed it, I felt that my mouth, throat, and stomach were burning. Tears came out of my eyes. The Mahapurusha said, Oh, it is troublesome. Then take this. It will be soothing. So saying, he put another morsel or part into my mouth 
from the same mixture. Oh, it was so soothing, so delicious, delicious and sweet smelling. I have never eaten such a thing before. How wonderful. In both cases, it was one and the same thing affecting in two different ways at once and at the same time. I had seen so many saints in my life, but never one with power to do such impossible things. I understood that the Mahapurusha had performed this Leela only to humble me. The pride of my yogi containments was now gone. And along with, with it was gone my contempt for bhakti. I was convinced as I had heard sometime before that all the different cities which the yogi attained after a long course of arduous exercises came to a devotee of their own, even though he never wanted or tried for them. I surrendered myself completely at the feet of the Mahapurusha and began to live with him and do as he ordained for the rest of my life. So this Mahapurusha was no one else than our Babaji Mahashaya or Sri Radharaman Charandas Deva. I hope you are following, are able to follow, also with translations. So, let's continue. Once, Babaji Mahasaya was going with his Sankirtana party along the highway of the city of Puri, when a she-dog was found sitting on the road, giving out piteous outcries, which attracted the notice of our Babaji Mahashaya. He stopped short in the middle of the Sankirtana and inquiring about the cause of her, her distress, came to know that she was mourning for her four puppies taken away from her to be reared by some gentleman of another part of the city. So somebody took the puppies, her puppies. She was solely aggrieved and could not be persuaded to take food or drink. Babaji Mahashaya approached her, bowed down to her, and started sermonizing her thus, Ma, this is after all the way of the world, the union of friends and relatives is inevitably followed by separations, separation. All beings are in the hands of God, bound to live and move as he wishes. <clears throat> Attachments of all kinds, filial, affectionate, and all the rest arise 
out of ignorance of our true selves, in duty bound to serve our Lord. Being born as you are in the blessed land of the Lord, and having already had enough of the world to be tired of, it is high time that you should turn to godly ways of life hearing the name of the Lord in the company of devotees. And partaking of nothing but the Mahaprasad to keep you alive. Now, Ma, if you accompany us to our lodging, you will have a hundred sons in the person of myself and my attendants. Instead of the four, you have lost by chance. There, you would find all possible care and comfort at our hands. The sea dog looked steadfastly in his face as he was thus speaking to her. And then when Babaji Mahashaya went on, she followed as she heard him say, come with us and you shall have Mahaprasad. The devotees were struck with wonder to see and hear all this. And they all took the dust, they all took the dust of the road where she was seated to bless their souls with it. The dog came. He was served with Mahaprasad every day. He would go with Babaji Mahashaya wherever he went at the head of his Sankirtana party. He would never partake of anything but Mahaprasad. Even when other kinds of food were offered to her. He would sound like the blowing on co of conscience when evening arati service was going on in the temple and would uplift her front feet and cry out, Oh, oh, wherever Babaji Mahashaya shouted, Haribo, at the pitch of his voice. So interesting story. So uh, after this, starting is starting the next story, continuing the story of uh, Saint Babaji Mahashaya. But I think now it's the time that we stop for today, and I really hope that you got inspiration from today's story i mean i got it really it's so beautiful especially when he was explaining how prema it's already in us it's not something we need to attain the point is that we clean our hearts and prema will awaken i mean we will start to see it and this always reminds me when I heard this uh, that where your focus goes, energy flows. Our, our focus on our Ishtadev can help us to clean our hearts and allow this prema to shine. That's that's the point. It's so beautiful, so beautiful, and so natural. 
something that we feel that love is something in us naturally just needs to be awakened thank you very much for attending today somebody maybe wants to say something or ask something Radha Charan, you maybe. Radhe, Radhe. I just Radhe, Radhe. like such stories. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's very good. Inspiring. Yeah. Thank you all. And Helgus, it's dream she's dreaming of Rindavan now. <laughs> she's dreaming of me now and so okay thank you everyone and see you next uh wednesday when we will continue with the stories about same babaji mahashaya so very nice stories Rade, rade. Thank you.